Hi guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use hydrochloric acid to test whether or not your sample of metal does or does not react and to see what, if anything, you get as a result of that reaction, if the reaction occurs. To do this, you're going to need to get one of those little plastic tubs that I have, and I'm just going to draw everything by hand for you here. So here's my little plastic tub rendition, there you go, one of those little, pla oops. There you go. little plastic tub, and you want to fill it about halfway with water. Get a small test tube and just lay the test tube down underneath the water level until it's totally full of water and there are no air bubbles. And then stand it upright in your water like this. If you don't want to have to hold it there, then you can get a pegboard. You're going to need one anyway, so you might as well. You can get yourself a pegboard and you can clamp that little guy into place there. Um, with a little bit of room at the bottom because what you're going to want to do is you're actually going to want to snake a gas trap tube up to the top of that test tube. So you're going to want a tube to go up in there. Where's that tube going to be attached to? Well, you're going to run the hydrochloric acid reaction in a large test tube. Oops, very poorly drawn large test tube. It's a little bit better. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your metal sample in here, the bottom of this large test tube, clamp it in place just like the other one. You need a large clamp for the large test tube, small clamp for the small test tube. And then you're going to get one of those gas uh, trap bends, which has a stopper at the top. It'll fit in your large test tube. That's why you need a large test tube, because that stopper won't fit in a small test tube. It has a glass bend here attached to the other end of this tubing that's going to sneak into your gas trap. Now, obviously, uh, before you put this setup on, you're going to pour your acid in. So you just need a little bit of acid, about that much, less than halfway. And I'll probably give you a squeeze bottle with acid in it to squeeze in there. You want to do this whole thing in the hood because if it does react, you're going to immediately get hydrogen gas produced from the hydrochloric acid and the metal. And so you'll see steaming and smoking and everything and you want it to be in the hood because the, hydrochlor the hydrogen gas actually will make you choke if you inhale it. It won't kill you instantly or anything like that, but it is uncomfortable and unpleasant. So I like to do this in the hood. And what you can do is, um, if you work quickly enough, you're just going to uh, cap as soon as you got the hydrochloric acid on there, you're going to cap this. And if a, if a reaction is happening, not only will you see bubbling down here, and if you want to, you can just gently touch the bottom of that test tube with your fingers and you can feel that it, it will get hot if you see bubbling, um, indicating a chemical reaction is happening. Not only that, but you're going to be collecting the gas in here. And if there is a reaction, woohoo, because now we have some hydrogen gas collecting in this test tube. You might get more gas than the test tube will hold, in which case you'll see bubbling in the water as it starts to um, fill that test tube up completely and then overflow. That's okay, but you don't want to remove things until this whole thing has died down because hydrochloric acid is pretty dangerous. Um, it will burn your skin. It will definitely burn your eyes. You definitely have to be wearing goggles when you do this. So once the whole thing is done, you know, you can turn off the fan in the hood. All the bubblings die down. The next step is going to be to do a flame test on your trapped gas because this is pretty cool. If you have hydrogen gas, you want to check this out. So far in the class, we have not seen uh, a splint test done with hydrogen gas. You want to use a lit splint, not a glowing one. And what you want to do is hydrogen gas is lighter than air, which means it floats up. So all you have to do is lift this test tube straight up in the clamp. I'm just going to make it bigger over here so you can kind of see what I mean. So here's your clamp, here's your test tube in the clamp. So you're just going to gently pull up on it so it stays in the clamp and it comes above the water level. Your gas, because it's hydrogen gas, if you got a reaction, and it depends on what metal you have, don't want to disappoint you if it doesn't happen for you, but um, if you pull it all the way up, that hydrogen gas is lighter than air, so it's fighting its way up this way, so it's not going to escape on you. So that gives you a little bit of time, but don't waste too much time, because eventually it will work its way out of that test tube. So after you pull it up, you're going to have somebody light a splint, what you want to do is have that flaming splint right at the entrance to the mouth of the tube, maybe this much in at the most. And if you've really got hydrogen gas in there, you should hear a fairly loud pop. It sounds like boop, like that. It can startle you if you're not expecting it, so don't be nervous. Nothing's going to explode on you. You are getting a mini explosion from that tiny amount of hydrogen gas. 
So this is confirmation that hydrogen was produced. And then the other interesting thing is, if hydrogen gas was produced, well, that means that your metal, which if, if it did react, will have dissolved or appear to have dissolved in your liquid, which means that you now have some substance that is dissolved in that liquid. You want to hold on to that because that might be a clue also to what substance you have. For example, you could take that liquid and do something called a flame test on it. Whoops. And a flame test is another tutorial that explains how to figure out what is lurking in your dissolved liquid there, or what is dissolved in your liquid there. It's also possible that, depending on the metal, that you get what's called a precipitate. A precipitate is a solid that doesn't dissolve, that forms, well, can't fit it there, hold on. Haha, <laughs> change the location. Precipitate. You'll get a precipitate, which means that's a chemical that forms due to reaction that can't dissolve and falls to the bottom. If you have a precipitate, that'll indicate one type of metal, and if you don't, it might indicate a different type of metal. So after you get this reaction, if you do, um, and you've tested your hydrogen gas, hold on to this liquid because you might want to use it for, like I said, a flame test, and you might want to examine your precipitate, so you might want to do several things. But so what you want to do is you want to store that liquid. So you're going to detach everything. You might want to leave this set up in the hood for another group. Um, you can leave the, the clamps and the pegboard and the gas trap and all that stuff. But what you want to take with you is that large test tube that contains your liquid and potentially a precipitate. Take that back to your lab station and you can call me over. I will give you some suggestions on how best to store that stuff so that you can run further tests on it later. So just let me know, because what I want is to probably transfer it out of that large test tube, and it's gonna depend on what we've got laying around and available for transfer into. So you should come talk to me, and I'll store it for you, and I'll label it for you, so that if you aren't able to get to further tests today, you'll have it for tomorrow or the next day. Okay, see you in the next tutorial.